title of this video is Astrology Update April 28, 2024. Welcome. My name is Georges Rabena and this is a video on the ending of karmic contracts for this past month. So I want to talk about what has April actually been about and why has this been such a huge month of the collective and why is it so heavy, so intense? Why is there so much happening all in one month? Because of course I know for everybody is different, everybody has different experiences in their life, but generally speaking, April was the heaviest month of the year of 2024. And all of 2024 serves a specific theme. Because you know, 2024 is the year of karma. And karma, of course, is usually reserved during the main event, the main time of the year. And face it, like it or not, but that's exactly what we just went through. So let's talk about it. So as it is now that I'm doing this live, it's April 28th. And there are mm, one, two, three, yeah, four significant transits at this time. So first of all, you know, astrology happens in cycles. And we have just ended a major cycle. A cycle actually that was already preparing. If you look at the last four months, since the year 2024 started, since January, we have essentially been in the waiting room, just waiting for things to change, for something to complete, for something to resolve, and whatever had to be resolved already in January, it got stuck. Yeah. The collective had, 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 had something stuck, and this what was stuck was released in April. Because in April, we had an eclipse season, a season of darkness, where the sun was conjunction Chiron on April 8. And Chiron is the wounded healer. Chiron is about shadow work, actually more precisely about shadow integration. So it's about coming to terms with something that people have been avoiding. People have been trying to not face that, not deal with that, because that is Chiron. Why is it the wounded healer? Well, because he's wounded, that means he's kind of shy. He's ashamed, actually. Karen deals with shame issues. Of course, nobody talks about this, so you don't need to read this online. You don't need uh, to confirm this with your facts. You just need to know that Chiron, because it is so such a sensitive point in astrology, because it is so fragile, because it is so unstable. It's like we don't want to deal with that. And of course, every time we don't want to deal with something, it's because we are ashamed or because we are fearing embarrassment, fearing ex being exposed. It's the fear that somebody knows we got dirt on, knows we did something wrong. So of course, something has already been wrong, something has already been hidden, something has already been avoided before April even started. Yeah, this is about long-term issues. So this is why when we talk about April and the transits that I'm going to talk about next, which is the transits that we have now, we first need to understand how did we get here. Yeah. So if you want to understand a little bit more about astrology, Maybe it's good if you leave a subscribe, if you're new to my channel, because you will see more videos like this in the future, where I talk about how does something actually happen? How can you predict what's going to happen three months from now? How can you understand why something is happening? Because you are, if you understand why April happened the way it did, then maybe in the future, you'll be able to get a beneficial outcome, an outcome that you want. 
So let's look at this. Right now we have a Neptune conjunction Mars transit. A Neptune is about confusion. Neptune is about hiding. And Mars is about conflict. It's about aggression, fighting. So a conflict right now is being avoided. But Mars is also work. Mars is productivity. So right now we have a procrastination transit. Let's lay it off. Let's do it tomorrow. Let's rest. There's a need to rest. And to understand the need to rest transit is to understand, well, April has been very busy. April has been very busy, full of work, full of activities. So now, Neptune Mars tells us it's time to take a break. It's time to go on a vacation. You know, if you knew this three weeks ago, that there's going to be a month full of challenges, full of work, and all you have to do is to wait for this transit, is to wait for April 28th before you can take a break, then you could have organized everything. You could have managed everything in your mind and you could, you could have a, a life that is structured, a life that is more stable. And that's exactly what astrology is for, that you can plan your life according to the events that are going to unfold, whether you like them or not. Because the matter of the fact is, there is a Mars-Neptune transit right now. People don't really feel like doing much. This is really a time out. There could even be people trying to avoid accountability. There could be people who are regretful about what happened. Maybe there has been a fallout in somebody's life recently. Maybe there has been fighting, arguing. Or maybe somebody is just feeling a burnout, feeling fatigued. So now we need to do some healing. And of course, the whole month of April has been nothing but healing, the whole month. So now it's okay if you don't want to do anything, right? Because that's what the transit is actually saying. So if you are somebody who's usually very productive, who's usually very active, even you will feel this transit on some level now. So, this is why I was already planning this whole month ahead and uh, I've already taken a break for this time. I don't have any work at the moment. Yeah, all the work uh, is planned for May. All my next readings are planned for May because you don't want to work when there's a Mars conjunction Neptune transit. You just don't. Why? Because you don't want to. Because Mars is what you want to. And what you want to, which is your drive, your ambition, your motivation, is conjunction Neptune. The mist, the fog, the let me go to sleep, the let me do some therapy, let me heal. So... You know, everything that happens in astrology is, of course, happening internally. So all these aspects we're just showing you, this is what you're going through. Like it or not, you're looking at a mirror. And the mirror is like, uh, like a clock. Yeah, like we have now 12 o'clock. Right now it's 12.12 actually on my clock as I'm looking at it now. And at this time, now Mars is going to be Neptune. But at the 4th of May, which is almost a week from now, Mars is no longer going to be conjunction Neptune. And that's the date, 4th of May, when you want to go back to work, when you want to get productive again. Because when Mars will be at 2 degrees of Aries. So this is when it reaches an 8 degree orbit with Neptune. After 8 degrees, between Mars and Neptune, it's essentially leaving the orbit. Okay? So this is how you can read this. And, uh, of course, when Mars is in Aries, you're going to want to do things. You're, you're, you're up and, and running. 
you, you want to do things because if you do things when Mars is in Aries, they're usually going to succeed. Now, if you try to force yourself, if you try to be very active and productive, when Mars is in Pisces, conjunction Neptune, you're just going to burn yourself out. Guaranteed. So this is why it's important that you need to read energy so you understand this. And, uh, of course, what happens next is that because Mercury returned direct like uh, two to three days ago, Mars is now conjunction, uh, sorry, Mercury is now conjunction North Node. Yeah, but North Node is still in Aries, 15 degrees, and Mercury is now at 16 degrees at the 28th of April. So for another day or two, it's going to be a need to communicate. A need to reserve something in your mind. Maybe something that's not clear. Maybe something needs to be said, like a conversation needs to be had. Maybe the last two days you already had this conversation. Maybe you are already talking to somebody and telling them, look, this is what needs to change. This is what we need to do. Because Aries is action. Mercury is we need to talk about this action. Maybe we need to hold somebody accountable. Maybe we need to tell them our opinion. Let them know this is where we stand. This is what we are about. Because Aries is the identity. And the identity is always in conflict. That is why Mars is the ruler of Aries. Because it's you, identity, you, versus them. Separation consciousness. So Mercury needs to communicate about what separates us. What keeps us apart? Because if we can't talk about these things, we're operating in our shadow. We're avoiding. We're dodging. We're, we're not dealing with reality. And those who don't deal with reality, they're weak. They're losers. Because in life, and this is what I said in the eclipse season, if you didn't watch my video about the eclipse transit, about what the eclipse season was actually about, I really highly recommend you to check that out. That you check out the channel uh, of mine and uh, look up the Chiron Eclipse video. Because the month of April was about winners and losers. Yeah. It was about the divide. Again, Aries, separation consciousness. Yeah? We're not talking Pisces unity consciousness here. Somebody's right. Somebody's wrong. You don't like it. Well, somebody needs to be right and somebody needs to be wrong. Why? Because there is a truth. There is a reality. Of course, it's also possible that both people are wrong. <laughs> this also happens. But somebody's right. That means somebody is seeing things clearly. And that person is going to make whoever is not seeing things clearly, whoever is dodging accountability, whoever is making excuses, whoever is living in denial, that person is punished, is separated from the winner. The winner is the person who sees things clearly. Very simple. Because Aries roots the third eye. Aries roots vision, seeing the truth acting on the truth because the truth leads to decisive action the truth leads to clarity but if you don't have clarity if you don't see things clearly if you are suffering from distortions if you are living in fear the third eye will be closed you will be unable to make decisions you'll be indecisive and you, you you'll dodge accountability you'll be in denial so Two groups of people, seeing things clearly, not seeing things clearly. One of those two groups is going to level up. This is what's happening because this is April and this is finishing. So a contract is being reserved. Contract is ending. A relationship is ending. A job is ending. A situation is completing, a work is finishing. All of these things we are finally putting to rest. As Mercury has turned direct, 
had us finished a one month cycle of going inwards, looking at our problems, wondering, rethinking, analyzing, guessing, doubting. And doubt can cripple even the greatest warrior. I say it over and over again, because that's what Karen is about. The doubt, the I'm not sure, should I really do this thinking over and over and over it. So people, if you have identified who the loser is and who the winner is in your life, and you belong to the group of losers, then you know what to do. All you need to do is to look at the transits and to see what the transits want you to do. And if you're a winner, then this is your confirmation. Have you been honest about your communication? Have you been direct? Have you been confronting? Have you been no, no bullshit? Just say it how it is. Good. Contract is reserved for that. And that's essentially the Mercury North Node transit in a nutshell. It's been going over the North Node for about three times. And it has gone over Chiron for two times. It's going to go over Chiron a third time on May 1st. On May 1st, Mercury is going to go down to Chiron again. That means where we have been hurt and where we are still hurting because of words being exchanged, because of what you said, that's going to be activated again. So whatever you said, whatever, whatever you fought, whatever you debated upon, whatever you argued, it's going to sting on May 1st. And after that, it's over. Mercury is not going to be conjunction Chiron for another year. So we're finally leaving this behind. This is why April truly is finishing all these karmic lessons around communication and aggression and conflict and identity and fear. Yes, fear has been the main theme. So the easiest way to identify if you are a winner or a loser after April is over, that means if you, if you are doing well, is are you operating from fear or are you operating from courage? If you're operating from fear, that means you're not dealing with something. That means you are catastrophizing, thinking about worst case scenarios, you're avoiding, you're walking around, just trying not to deal with it, pretending that it's not a big deal, trying to forget. Moving on when you never even dealt with the situation. Imagine all those losers who move on from a situation that they never resolved, that they never even dealt with. And this is going to be at least 50% of the human population after the end of April. Let me repeat this. After the end of April, when we get into May, 50% at least, this is really a mild estimate, <laughs> at least 50% of the human population is moving on from something that it never even dealt with. So the other 50% are moving on from something, having dealt with it, but somebody else, of course, had to dodge, had to project, had to uh, avoid, had to play mind games, whatever. And that's essentially all that Mercury is really trying to show us here. Because Mercury is in its shadow right now. It is, it's, in, it's in a shadow period. So, of course, <laughs> we can look at the shadow of Mercury. What is the shadow of Mercury? Manipulation. Avoidance. Being a trickster, right? So it's playing mind games. So we're looking at the mind games, at the lies and the deception that we've had to go through for the month of April. Because, of course, when Mercury is in retrograde, there's many things that we want to say. But are we saying them? 
Are we letting them out? The winners have let them out. And the winners are moving on. The losers, they never addressed the problem. And now that April is over, we're hoping they don't have to ever deal with a problem again. And of course they will. Of course they will deal with the issue again. And it's going to haunt them. Because this is the year of karma. So this is really... I mean, Saturn is in Pisces. Pisces is also about manipulation. Saturn is the Lord that punishes you. Punishes you for thinking you could get away with it. Thinking you can just manipulate people. You can play games on people. You can play with your feelings. You can be selfish. No empathy. No regard for how they feel about what you did. Just... Pretending that nothing ever happened, being an escape artist, right? The shadow of Pisces. Thinking that you could actually get away with it, with all these transits and Saturn being in Pisces in the year of karma, because 2 plus 2 plus 4, 2024, is 8. 8 is Saturn. <laughs> and you actually think you would get away with it. <laughs> oh my God, can you actually imagine? I'm not sugarcoating this. I'm not being exaggerating or of anything. 50% of the human population. Losers. That are actually, they have no idea. Just, they have no clue how much they're in a world of hurt. How much they're going to be punished. Punished so hard by divine attribution. Throughout all these trends that are going on throughout 2024. Because we have now entered a six month period after the eclipse on April 8th. We have six months of them having to pay for what they've done. Because if you are a loser or if you know a loser who has avoided accountability in the month of April and they have changed nothing. They're just living their life, chilling, Doing no shadow work, not healing their ass, not doing anything. Do you really think they're going to heal themselves in the next six months? After what just happened? After how much pressure they just received for finally try changing something? So much pressure in one month. Sun conjunction Chiron eclipse. Jupiter conjunction Uranus. A wake up call, a tower moment, a collapse, Mercury in retrograde, pressuring, please communicate, stop lying, stop stop deceiving yourself, stop being in denial, thinking about it over and over again. And after all these trends are over, they're still the same. Do you actually believe those people are going to change for the next six months when the, the, the hardest pressure is already over? No. They're not changing. Whoever doesn't change after April, they're never going to change. Until the next tower moment. Until the next collapse. And that's going to be a very personal one. And it's going to hurt very, very badly. And it's, go it's going to come, one way or another. But if you're waiting for somebody to pick up the pieces, if you're hoping that somebody is going to listen to reason, it's not going to happen. Not after April. Forget about it. Move on with your life. And leave those karmics behind. Because that's essentially what it is, right? Aries North Node. The North Node going towards conflict. Towards separation. Into separation. Away from the South Node. Away from Libra. Because again, imagine that. Astrology is about cycles. 2023 was the Libra year. Number seven, Venus, Libra, relationships with Venus in retrograde in that year. So it's been a shit show. It's been a cleanup again for relationships. And now, the year of karma, do you think it's going to improve? I don't think so. What, 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 the only thing that's going to improve is the punishment the pressure, that's what's going to improve. And of course for you, 
if you have been doing the inner work and you actually look at yourself, you look at how your actions, your behavior has been contributing to the, to, to the relationships that you've had, to the dynamics that you've been playing out, then the rewards are coming for you right now. And there's going to be many rewards now after April. Because, of course, the, the pressure cooker is done. Uh, if you've been doing work and you're moving on, don't worry about it. Just think about yourself. So, let's see here. Hmm. What else is going on? Okay. Let's talk about these other trends coming up. So... The sun is in 8 degrees of Taurus. And the moon is now entering Capricorn as well. So now that I'm making this video on the Sunday, on the 28th, we have pretty heavy energy going on. It's pretty dense. Yeah. Even though this jupiter Uranus conjunction has been recently, you could still get some revelations throughout the next month. You could still get some insights. So you could see something. You could see something that you haven't seen before. You could finally start to understand something. You could get a message of somebody. There could even be an apology. But uh, whatever message that you're going to receive at this time is going to show you something about yourself. To better understand what you're getting into. What you're moving into. Moving forward. Because this jupiter Uranus conjunction has all been about the future you're trying to build. And that means you have to leave the past behind. In the past, you just saw like one, two, three, four, five, six, how many past issues you've been carrying your entire life. You've probably seen like a whole cascade of all these issues, all accumulated, all at once in one month. And you're now moving on from that. Now moving on from that, you're going to get rewarded, literally, this is the area where you get rewards, in the house with Jupiter Uranus conjuncts in your chart. Wherever you have Taurus in your chart, that's where you're going to get it. But of course, uh, Jupiter is now slowly moving out of orbit with Uranus. Jupiter is at 20, 23 degrees now. Uranus is at 22 degrees. So you're going to feel this Jupiter Uranus conjunction for a month until the end of May. And after that, June, July is going to slowly move into Gemini. And then we're really going to see an increase in communication. We're really going to see an increase in travel, an increase in knowledge, teaching, learning. So all the things that we're dealing about now, all the communication issues, the, 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 the avoiding, the lying, the scheming, the mind games that people are playing, I think this is really going to get a major, major turn, a major change at the end of June. I mean, when Jupiter goes into Gemini. And, uh, yeah, these are really the major transits. That's all you need to know at the moment. That's all I can say, really, about what is going on right now. Now, what is next? What's going to happen now after April is over? Well, it depends really where you stand. So if you belong to the group of winners, if you belong to the group of people who have been confronting situations, who have been saying, hello, let's deal with it, and you have dealt with it, problem after problem after problem, even though I know it's been hard. I know it's hard to do shadow work. I know it's hard to, to change your behavior. To get out of your comfort zone, to get uncomfortable, to get vulnerable, to, to put yourself out there, to open yourself up to a world of hurt. Nobody wants that, but that's what's necessary. Because otherwise, there's no other way to deal with Chiron. There's no other way to heal. So if you've been doing that, if you've been healing, then what's going to happen next is that something completely different is going to come into your life. Because you're operating at a completely different frequency, 
you're going through a glow up essentially because check in with yourself that problem that pattern in your relationships that one thing that bothered you that one thing you thought you could never get over how is it now how are you dealing with relationships now how is your communication is it any better any different your answer to that question determines what's going to happen for the next six months because if your answer is uh, i don't know my communication could be better i could be more vulnerable i could be less shady less avoidant less manipulative less cowardly i could be then don't expect much change actually expect more pressure and more problems to come slowly over time of course the worst is over but uh, karma is never over until you are done with it and uh, you know I'm not trying to be negative but this is the year of karma so if your answer is anything except yes my communication is completely different if your answer is any different from that it's not looking too good for you but if your communication is different then you will be rewarded you'll you'll be shocked you'll be in a massive surprise what's coming next you have no idea because the way it works this has been like a little test like you go to school and you take an exam and then you're going to be reevaluated and you know the anticipation before you get your mark and you're like is it going to be an a or is it going to be an f now imagine how do you feel when you get an f and how do you feel when you get an a because depending on your answer how is my communication now that's how it's going to be for the next six months so take your pick between a and f <laughs> it's really that simple because we're talking about energy here it's a cycle of energy of course still, you can still change it's not like it's not possible to get from your C to an A now you can but the universe is not going to make it any easier for you April has been the easiest month of the year to change the absolute easiest why because it's been the hardest because the pressure has been on from all sides non-stop drilling into your brain come on like you know this meme where it opens your eyes like come on like <laughs> like look at it <laughs> so that's what's happening and now it's like okay i'm gonna leave you alone you're left to your own devices and what happens if you leave a bunch of monkeys in the zoo to their own devices they're gonna do a bunch of monkey tricks they're not really doing anything they're just like they're just going all over the place just doing god knows what but uh, don't don't fool yourself they're not gonna heal so in any case this is really my update for you for now if you like this update and if, if you like to see more updates like this in the future please leave a like and uh, if you are interested in any of my readings or my services check out my services on my services page or if you want to you can reach out one-on-one -on -one through messenger and you can book a reading directly from me i do astrology readings one-on-one -on -one. as do predictions if you want to know what's happening next or if you're interested in my zomatic experiencing services and my zomatic embodiment i do this one-on-one -on -one healing work to address your blockages in communication or your relationships 
If you're interested in these kinds of things or in my course, you can reach out anytime. That being said, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.